Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's been some time since I made a video, so I just wanted to check in and let you know what's been going on. Uh, I already talked about it a little bit on my social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook. I made a post today and I talked teeny bit about what what I've been going through over the past week or 10 days but I wanted to elaborate a little bit more because I did have an experience that I wanted to share with everyone and maybe it'll help people that are going through some kind of sticky or perhaps unstable periods during this time so first thing I'll say <laughs> is that within the past 10 days I actually ended up getting food poisoning <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, so let's talk about it. I don't think I've ever had food poisoning before. I think I've had times where I've eaten things that didn't really sit too well with me and they either caused some digestive issues or something like that, but never the reaction that I had recently. So I had gotten takeout and for those of you that know me, when I do cleaning, like when I have my cleaning days, I usually don't cook because who wants to clean and then cook and then have to clean up again afterwards? Not me. So I wanted to get some takeout. And we did. And I would say about maybe 75% of the way through eating, I felt something funny. <laughs> and I actually kind of like side-eyed, like, hmm, that was interesting. <laughs> like that felt different. But then I didn't think anything of it. I was like, you know, well, whatever. I'll just continue eating because I don't think I've ever felt it before. So I was like, we'll just see what happens. Um, I would say within about two hours is when I started to feel even more strange. Like I got a really bad headache. And even that, I'm like, okay, maybe again, something I ate, I was a bit sensitive to. Headaches are sometimes my reactions to eating things that I'm sensitive to. So I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. It was uh, when I went to bed and then woke up in the middle of the night and then early in the morning where I was like, yeah, no, something's wrong. Because when I woke up in the middle of the night and early in the morning, it was like, it was like I was being kept up. So it's like, you know, when you first start to get sick, um, like you have a cold or something and you have a hard time falling asleep or you get up and it's almost like you you stay awake because you're uncomfortable, that feeling. That's what I was feeling. It was like a feeling of just overall systemic discomfort. And I'm just like, I don't feel well. I'm like, something's not right. And uh, I'll just say that for the, an entire day, I was in the bathroom and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> But it was at that point I was like, okay, I've never had this before, but it seems like it was food. It's food poisoning. I like I said, I've never had that kind of reaction. And again, if it's something that I'm sensitive to, my body does not react in that way. It's the the reactions are typically pretty mild, um, and most of the time I try to like avoid things that I know are going to cause somewhat longer term reactions. So I try not to eat those things if I know that's what's going to happen. But this was different. <laughs> so that took me out for the day. And even the next day, I was better, but not 100%. I would say it took me about three days to fully get over it and feel somewhat normal. And then by the time I got back to feeling somewhat normal, just in my belly and just overall, I actually ended up I would say being on the verge of a migraine towards the end of the week, like around uh, Friday, Saturday. And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and with that, I kind of woke up feeling just like dry mouth and nauseous. And I'm like, like I have had that before. So I'm like, but I wasn't really feeling a lot of head pain. I was just feeling sick. And then towards the middle of the day, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just getting a migraine. Um, but luckily for me, I caught it fast enough and it was never, it's never really fully blew up into a full migraine. So thankfully I was able to come out of that 
relatively unscathed. <laughs> like it didn't take me out for the day. It was just like, I just had to take it easy and not push myself too hard to do anything, walk slowly, all that sort of stuff. So that wasn't too bad. It was more so for me, the idea that it's like, okay, just got over food poisoning. And now I have to be careful because I, I might get a migraine. So and even after that, I was just, I was busy after that. I was occupied. Not a bad busy. It was, it was, I was occupied. I was doing things. It was fine. Um, but it was okay. So I wanted to share that. That, that was not pleasant. So <laughs> I, um, so if I seemed absent, that's, that's why. <laughs> it's because I was trying to recover, uh, from all of that. But, um, the other thing that I wanted to share, um, are just my reflections and insights on the energies that have been unfolding over the past couple of weeks. So, as you know, we've been moving through a very uh, potent period of transformation, and it's been like a really intense transformation. Now, for me personally, and I, I can only really share my experience, is that I'm noticing for myself that I'm moving through this period of transformation as it's like I'm coming into this period where I'm going to be starting something new and very different. It's, it's something that I've had an affinity to, but I haven't been able to fully embody yet. It's at this point in my journey, I feel like a lot of stuff is about percentages and like degrees in a way. So you may have an affinity towards something and you may feel it within your being like a, let's say 10%, but then when it's time to more fully step into it, you may feel it at more like 50%, 60%, 70% to a greater degree of experience. And that has a certain impact on you. So that's basically what's happening with me. It's like stuff that I've been feeling that has been like um, basically um, in, in progress for a while is really starting to come together more. And I'm excited about it. I actually don't have... I'm, I myself am not necessarily consciously afraid of moving into this new period. It is, it, I mean, it's a little intimidating only because it's, it's new and I, it's something that I have not physically explored much. Um, but I can't say that I'm just like, um, I guess you could say like, oh my God, I'm just so afraid. And that's the only thing that's taken over me. Like, no, I'm actually quite excited about it. What seems to be causing... What has caused issues uh, related to that is the almost like reaction that my body's having that I almost can't control. So even though I'm not consciously afraid, it's almost like my body is feeling some resistance to this transformation because one, it's new. It's, it's a different kind of expression of my spirituality. So on some level the way that I've been expressing myself just as a whole is changing. So nothing is necessarily going away. It's just getting bigger. And maybe some of you are also feeling this, that you and your vision, your desires are growing. They're expanding. And in order for them to expand, you do have to, in a way, leave behind old ways of expression. But they're but they're also not necessarily going anywhere. They're just they're you don't it's just that you're not expressing them as like the main focal point anymore. It's like they've done their job and um what you need to express more prominently is going to be in the forefront. So as a part of that it's just it's been creating a lot of anxiety. And I really had to like, you know, work through it and sit with it and see what was going on. But it was hard at first because the anxiety is very overwhelming. And I found that anytime I would try to sit with it and tap into it, it would just, it would just be too much. It, it was almost I, like, I don't know if I've ever had a panic attack, but that's almost like what it felt like. Almost like, um feeling like you can't take a deep breath and your breath is stuck almost like 
<laughs> almost like you're frozen in inhale and it's and it's hard for you to really breathe deeply so it's it's really uncomfortable actually and it causes a lot of cramping and just pain and discomfort i'm just readjusting yeah it causes a lot it causes a lot of discomfort in in the body especially around the heart and like the rib cage so <laughs> i'm like oh my god this is really uncomfortable i need to see if i could work through this so what i would try to do is sit with it as much as possible, but I was having a hard time. So now this leads me into the experience that I wanted to share. And this happened as I was on my way to sleep. So I was on my way to sleep and I had Osiris appear. It was the first time I've actually seen Osiris come up like that in my visions. I actually had a really strong resonance with Osiris and Anubis when I was a kid, but I, I've never had any actual experiences with Osiris um, along my spiritual journey. So he came up. I was like, okay, that's interesting. I, I believe that Osiris came up as a representation of my inner masculine or my inner king, uh, so to speak. So what I heard as clear as day is... It's not enough to feel. And I was like, whoa. All right. So what happened is I felt the energy start to pull back. Uh, I felt the energy start to pull back and almost remove itself from the emotions. And I was able to observe without being so involved in the emotional aspect of this. And I think this experience really strikes a very important point and something that I had to learn because I'm so... Like, I'm such a, a proponent of, like, feeling and experiencing. But sometimes feeling almost has you, like, when you make the choice to really sink into something, almost like if it's too overwhelming, you need to be able to pull back from it and observe it. So you can get a clear, like, have more clarity about the situation. So if you're almost, if you're too involved and the emotions are just too much for you it's almost like you it's hard for you to see your way through it and it was once I was able to pull myself back from the emotions is when I was able to clearly see how I could move through them so once I was able to kind of pull myself out what I ended up remembering I actually forgot that I even had this as a tool to help me move through these kind of situations when they come up. Because anytime you go through any kind of transition, this can happen. You can be met with anxiety. You can be met with resistance if something is new and unfamiliar to you. And that tool was an affirmation where you state, even though I am afraid of X, Y, and Z, let's say in my case, even though I'm afraid of moving forward, I choose to do it anyway. And I have faith and trust that I have the strength and ability to whatever it is. I have the strength and ability to um, embrace this new beginning or this new part of my life with ease and grace. Something like that. You can always edit it to your preferences. <laughs> but I guess my point is, is that I didn't even remember that that was an option for me. So... And this really helped like a lot. So once I actually stated that affirmation and I stated it a few times to help me, what I found was that I was able to really move past the anxiety to see what was underneath it. Now, this was interesting, and I think it's going to help me in the future if I come across the situation again. Underneath that anxiety was grief and it was emotional pain. And I was, it was so interesting to me. I was really able to carve into the anxiety to see what was causing it and like what emotions were sitting there as the foundation, what was really, so the anxiety itself wasn't isolated. There was something under it. So part of the anxiety was coming from this idea of what I posted in my Instagram and Facebook posts of pushing through the membrane. 
So anytime you're moving through like almost like the birth canal where you're either you're, you're like both giving birth and you're also the baby that's coming through the birth canal at the same time, right? So when you're moving through these stages, you have to pass through a membrane. And that membrane is like the threshold that takes you from one chapter or one phase of your life to the next. But a part of that membrane are like is like beliefs, uh, emotions uh, that you have that you need to confront and feel and acknowledge and clarify before you're able to get to the other side. So... Once I was able to move past the anxiety and see the emotions and some of the causes around it, I was able to really get to the root of those, of those emotions. And what happened is they actually ended up coming up in my dreams and actually helping me to see what some of those emotions are related to. So anytime you're moving through... Um, a, a period of transformation, it's almost like you, you confront another emotional layer. So you discover, uncover, or revisit some emotions and beliefs that may be keeping you from moving into that next stage of your life. And that's what I had to do. So honestly, some of the things that came up, I didn't even know were there. I thought it was really interesting. It's something, I guess, I, it was always there, but I just... It hasn't come up until now. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I felt that way. I didn't even know I felt that way. So that was extremely helpful. And it's been helpful to me over these past few days as I move through the birth canal and I push through the membrane is stating that affirmation, even though I'm afraid to move forward, or even though I'm afraid of messing up, even though I'm afraid of whatever your fear is or what your anxiety is about, I choose to move through it anyway. So it's like you're affirming that you feel how you feel, but you're also affirming your strength and your courage and your ability to overcome obstacles. I find that to be like an amazing balance for helping you to move through difficult periods. Okay. And also just remember, you don't have to constantly tap into your emotions all the time, all the time, all the time. It's a, it's a lot of taxing work. So when you have the ability to take a time out and just detach from your emotions for a little bit and just give yourself, you know, time away to, to just not deal with it. It's, it. And it's in those times where you get clarity and you're able to see things from a different perspective, from a wider perspective. Can I just say too, that I do feel that during this Aquarius season, I didn't even think about it before, but it seems to be promoting a bit of overthinking. <laughs> like it seems to be causing the mind to go a little bit more just, you know, in circles. I noticed that just like when I was going into the city one day and I was on the train and I don't know, I just had like this crazy thought and it just, if I kept thinking about it and kept feeding it. It would just keep going and going. I'm like, okay, at some point I have to come out of this because there's nothing there. So just like, <laughs> just come out of it and let it go. But I've noticed that. So if you find yourself in this space where you're constantly overthinking, uh, do something to help calm the mind. So I found that listening to music, uh, calming music, like uh, I love Aeolia's music. I'll put the name down in the description, Aeolia, certain tracks by Jonathan Goldman, like Dolphin Dreams. Is it Dolphin Dreams? I think it's called Dolphin Dreams has been really helpful for me. So I'll put that down in the description. Um, but honestly, any kind of music that you feel relaxes you and just calms the nerves <laughs> and always as always spending time in nature, grounding yourself, getting fresh air. It's a requirement for me, especially because of where I am to get fresh air pretty much every day, even though I, I hate the cold. I have to find a way to, to go outside and get fresh air. So um, I think that's pretty much it. I know this is, this is a long video. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's been a while. So I just wanted to check in. And I hope you're all doing okay and that you're hanging in there. Um, just continue to take care of yourselves and um, let me know how you're doing. And I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.